find that there's a left limitation. Which joint, and, and I find that when I flex, same limitation. When I extend, the same limitation. All right, it's a unilateral restriction, so it's close to 50% loss to the left, fine to the right, loss of rotation in neutral, I flex, same loss, I extend, same loss. What's my hypothesis? Where am I being led to? AA. AA. AA joint. Okay? So now, if I look at rotation to the left, which glide am I interested in? What's that? Of what? Left. Okay. Or? Anterior of the right. Anterior of the right. Good. Well, the only one we're going to do is the anterior inferior of the right. Okay, it's a more common limitation. You, there are techniques to assess the left side, but we're just going to do the anterior inferior. This will help you with the majority of your patients. Okay. So, what I do is, now, she did a great job of slouching into the chair for me. Yeah. Why do I like that? Yeah, yeah it's not an end range, so it's techni technically not locking out, but she's taking up the slack so I don't have to worry about the rest of her body moving so much. Her thoracic spine is resting against the back of the chair, so I'm happy. Okay, so I'm going to come in, I'm going to palpate, C1, C2. All right, so my AA joint is between which two segments? C1 and C2, good. <laughs> the axis of the atlas, excellent. Now, when I palpate off of the, the base of the skull and I drop down, the first spinous process I feel is? C2. C2. So then I go on either side of C2, and I feel you can go articular pillar. All right, you can go TP, but that's going to be a little more sensitive, so you go articular pillar. I'm going to come around. I'm going to hug the head just like this. Okay. Now, what I do is I first start to have her rotate, and we get to the restriction. Don't push into pain, because if you rotate her into pain, once you start to add the glide, that's even more pain. You're not getting a good assessment of what's going on. So you go, maybe they stop there, maybe you back off a little bit. You say, okay, that's good. Now I'm stabilizing C2, so I've localized the movement at AA. I come around, I'm hugging the head. Watch for the nose and the eyes. Okay, it's very common that you don't realize that you're squishing their eyes and the pressure in the eyeball is not so comfortable. So I'm resting her head against my pack. You can use a pillow, okay, so that you can say, well, <laughs> not, not the side with the tag, but so if you're a female, you can cover it with the pillow so it creates a barrier. And then you still can get in here and the shoulder and the arm can give you the support. All right, and you come around here and your forearm, all right, the meaty part of the forearm, don't do the knife edge, we're not wrestling. And do the meaty part so it's more comfortable. Hug in a little bit, and then I use my super strong pinky to link right at C1. I have C2 with the lumbar grip here, okay? And now I have the pinky. You can back up the pinky this way. And now I'm behind C1 on the right, okay? And I'm stabilizing C2 on both sides of the lumbar grip. Now I rotate her a little bit, and as I rotate, Okay. I'm adding a little bit of a anterior inferior glide, just like this. Okay. So as I hug around, rotate the condyles male on male. When you rotate, that should happen. Okay. It's an anterior inferior glide going just like this. So I hug around and I'm pulling anterior and inferior, okay. dropping down just like this. Okay. You can use the head to allow to get that inferior glide. All right? You're almost, you're almost, I'm hesitant to say this, almost doing a little bit of a right side bend. Okay? But you're just allowing gravity to use the head to get that inferior glide. Okay? And your counter pressure is on the articular pillars or neural arch of C2, and you're just stabilizing. Okay? All right, give that a try. Very